This 15 year old Mac Pro 5,1 cheese grater recently got a few innocuous upgrades, like hardwiring an RTX 2070 directly to the power supply. Well, today, as promised, we're gonna attempt a particularly risky upgrade that, if successful, should really put this thing over the top. It's time to delid some Xeons, so stay tuned. And if you think the correct answer to power to performance is more power, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So this Mac Pro is in a pretty good spot right now. It's running the latest version of Ubuntu Linux, booting off of NVMe, and running stable with an RTX 2070 Super, a GPU that has no business in this thing. It has 96 gigs of triple channel memory, but I really want to push this thing as far as is humanly possible, which is why today I'm going to attempt an upgrade that I'm really rather afraid of. We're gonna put in these matched Xeon X5690s, each one a six core 3.46 gigahertz beast. But in order to do that, we need to actually delid the CPUs, which is something I've never done before and I'm pretty nervous about trying. It's probably gonna be fine, probably. But before we do that, I actually found a weird issue with this video card hack that I think we should take a look at first. Even though it's booting and running off of this 2070, I'm getting all these messages about the GPU does not have the right power cables connected. Yeah, GPU does not have the necessary power cables connected and Steam is taking forever to launch. So I think the correct thing to do at this point is to make sure all of those power cables are indeed connected. So yellow wires should be 12 volts and the black wires are ground. I'm just gonna turn it on and check each of these 12 volt wires to see if they're actually giving me 12 volts. So power on, black probe to ground. Let's see, 12 volts, nothing. Well, apparently I just suck at crimping because I found this one wasn't even connected underneath the protective coating. So yeah, out with this thing. You don't have to be good at crimping if you have molten metal. Oh yeah, success, no more error messages. Oh wow, look how well Teardown plays. This game is quite intensive. This runs like perfect. This is honestly incredible. I've been trying to play this on my gaming laptop and it runs way worse than this. Okay, well, I retook the benchmarks with the fixed GPU and well, results were pretty much the same. So I guess everything's fine. By the way, if you enjoy this kind of content and you have the means, I do have a Patreon linked down in the description below. The generous support of patrons and channel members ensures I can continue to fill my house with extremely bulky and unusual e-waste. So we're gonna be following the guidance of the incomparable House of Moth, who has filmed a method that seems pretty easy and safe when you watch him do it. We just need some hot air, a holder deal, and actually some old school razor blades. The other option I've seen a lot of people do is actually just crank the absolute crap out of these on a vise to pop the lids off. Seems pretty violent, although apparently it works for a lot of people, but I'm gonna take what I feel is the more delicate approach. And I will of course link to Jay's video down in the description below. I'm really gonna try to do exactly what he did. All right, let's take a gander at these stock CPUs. So as we can certainly see, original CPU, no lid, new CPU, lid. All right, the first thing we need to do is cut through the rubberized layer, which is around the outside so that we can melt the solder holding the heat spreader to the actual die. And it goes without saying, be careful with razor blades. They're sharp.
Now what I'm doing is placing razors between the lid and the board beneath to wind up with something like this, which is both putting pressure up on the heat sink to pop it away and shielding the CPU from the heat that we're gonna use. Now I'm gonna take these soldering helping hands here and I'm going to take our prepared CPU, hold it in place with the clippy deals, place this mat in here to catch our precious newly naked Xeon and apply some fresh hot air. All right, it popped. It didn't fall all the way because I guess there's a bit of the sticky goop holding it together, but the CPU is free. Ah. All right, I've got a fresh razor now, and we should just be able to scrape the remaining stuff off because it's quite soft. Just need to be careful not to maim myself. So what did you do today? Oh, you know, just shaved a CPU. And these Mac Pro coolers are pretty neat. I like how the fans just kind of hidden away in there. All right, let's place these new CPUs. All right, well, in you go, and you better work. If you don't feel a little nervous the first time you hit the power button, was it even worth doing? Oh, it chimed. But there's a red light on the motherboard. The fan is on. Well, the good news is it lives. The bad news is, apparently the red light on the motherboard means something about it's not seeing all the memory. If I go into NeoFetch, we're only seeing 64 gigs of RAM instead of the 96 that's installed. It sees our uh, Xeon X5690 24 threads. Yeah, the CPUs seem fine. We're seeing 24 thread. So that's six cores per CPU, 12 threads per CPU, times two, 24 threads at 3.591 gigahertz. That's fine. But why is it all of a sudden not seeing some of the memory, which is definitely going to give us a speed hit because this is a uh, triple channel memory. So I guess let's juggle the RAM around. All right, I've got two sticks of RAM in there and it still shows the red light. And this is just showing 16 gigs of RAM, which is one stick, so something's not right. Okay, I have made an unfortunate discovery. In fiddling around with the RAM, I decided to swap around the position of the two CPUs. It turns out that those little lights identify RAM banks that have some sort of an error. When I had the CPUs in the first configuration, the error was on this bank of RAM. When I swapped the CPUs, now the error is on this bank of RAM. So much like swapping around spark plugs to diagnose an engine, I do think we found an issue with this CPU. I don't know if something went wrong when I deleted it, maybe, you know, there's no pins to get bent, it's just all flat surface. I tried wiping it down with rubbing alcohol, but yeah, something is amiss. 
Okay, well, even with this RAM issue, single core performance has gone up dramatically, like 120 points, 110 points. Multi-core score has gone down. So I've gone ahead and ordered a replacement CPU that I will again try to delid. But in the meantime, technically this should perform better in video games with the faster, much faster single core. Well, although we had a bit of a letdown there at the very end, this was still mostly a success. We successfully delitted both of those CPUs, even though one turned out to be, well, a bit of a dud. The machine is significantly faster, even with the one bum CPU. And this RTX 2070 Super is, well, working super. I just popped on eBay right now, found another X5690, not too far away, for 20 bucks. It's on its way here now, and I'm gonna try delitting that one popping it in here and seeing if it solves the issue. Because working with a machine like this, well, there's a much lower barrier of entry than with a lot of high-end modern machines. So you get to play around with extremely well-engineered, well-laid-out, well-thought-out, and interesting computers for relatively cheap. I really can't say enough good things about this big cheese grater behemoth. In any event, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Alex the Rat, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Darren Johnstone, Dave's Garage, Drew Hamlin, Eduardo Fonseca, Free Hours 9, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rajansky, Graham, Greg from Rutk Mods, Harris Brody, JS, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Pipas, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowell, Nick Daniels, oh, it's just Jose, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Steve Salivan, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.